Hey guys and welcome to this video. This is part number five, I believe, of this Kang Teo build from Cyberpunk 2077. Um, game's not even out yet, but here it is. So this video is going to be about the coding. You can basically copy and paste my code straight into your Arduino IDE software. So basically, go to the description below and there's three links. There's a link to the Arduino Project Hub. That's the one I recommend. It's the easiest to copy the code from. There's also a link to my Reddit build log where I show a build log of this thing um, in the Nerf subreddits, uh, homemade subreddits for Nerf projects. And uh, the third place is the Nerf Haven website where got, there's like a forum there and I made a build log there as well. So when you click on those um, links below, it should eventually take you to this is the Arduino Project Hub page. It should take you to a page like this and you just scroll down and you'll find the code. This is like a full instruction, like a written instruction of how to build this entire project. So just you just go there yourself if you want to like just to read. Um, it'll explain how to wire up everything electronically and stuff like that. But here is the code. So you just you can click on the code in the um, in the contents page on the right hand side here. Then you go copy the code and that'll copy everything. You don't have to highlight it. Then you go to your Arduino IDE software. So just launch that. And you know, plug your Arduino in with a USB uh, USB cable, etc. And in here, just delete everything that's already there by default. And then you just paste Control V. And this tutorial is for like complete beginners, by the way. So just bear with me. This is now all in there. That code is now copy and pasted in there. Now we're going to do is to make sure that where it shows. Um, button pin uh, two five four three. Make sure your wiring is all like wired up to the Duino's correctly, um, to the Duino correctly. Um, that way the code will work properly, of course. Um, now to to figure that out, you go back to the build log here, and down here you got a schematic. So you can just download the schematic, open it up. Here it is and let's draw on this. So this is the uh, schematic and over here I wrote fake Duino because I got a third party Arduino. I fried a couple of my genuine Arduinos but um, genuine Arduinos work just fine. Just um, follow this protection circuitry I'm going to explain here uh, and you should be fine. Uh, make sure you wire up everything as you can see on the screen right now, this schematic and uh, Again, in that build log, it explains everything, but basically that code should work totally fine if you solder everything up like this diagram. So right now I'm going to go and show you the code again. So in the code here, I'm just going to zoom in, okay? I'm just going to zoom in so you can actually see, hopefully. Um, okay, so you should be able to see it now. All right, so scrolling down, now that you've wired everything to the right pins, following that schematic, uh, you go down and this is how, now this is how you program the um, the Kang Tao, the Nerf Blaster um, with this code. So what can you do in this code? Uh, it's pretty basic code, it just has the essentials just to make sure it works. Uh, so things you can change in here, uh, this is the ESC arming sequence. So first of all, electronic speed controls, which is uh, this thing right here, and there's another one here. Um, and those those two ESCs basically control the the speed of the motors over here. Those ESCs need to arm the motors. Uh, sorry, those ESCs need to be armed. Uh, otherwise, if you had because they're usually made for radio control planes, and if you're if you leave your throttle in the up position, the on position on your radio control plane, you switch your plane on, the propellers spin up straight away, and they'll chop your fingers up, or your plane will fly off on its own. So you don't want that to happen. So what happens is that the ESC makes sure that there's no throttle for the first few seconds um, and it's in safe mode then at that point basically. Um, and then and then you can throttle up after the first few seconds. Now for my ESC, that first few seconds is 3.7 seconds. You can see on the screen highlighted. Um, your ESC may vary. vary. If your ESC is is uh is is not exiting safe mode then you might want to increase this value to like five seconds so five thousand or even like you know ten seconds ten thousand milliseconds um and but 
hopefully you wouldn't have to wait for like 10 seconds for your ESC to exit the um, safe mode but uh, for me it's uh, 3.7 seconds or 3,700 million so if you have problems with your ESC making all these weird beeping noises and it's not like spinning the motors up or anything like that then try increasing this value here and then once you find the value you can slowly decrease it all the way down until until like it until it still works but you know like it's just so you don't have to wait for long so long so I don't want to wait like 10 seconds so I'll reduce it as much as I can for me it's 3.7 seconds 3.6 seconds it sometimes doesn't exit safety mode so that's that now moving on scrolling down to the void loop so this is where this so this part here is where you can increase or decrease the motor speed which will then increase or decrease the velocity of the dart so by default uh, throttle right is 92 and throttle right is 97 so 92 is the minimum speed so when you're so when you turn the safety switch off and that powers on the Arduino and it powers on the Kang Tao it runs the um, the arming sequence and once that's done it then goes straight to this number here 92 now this doesn't matter if your fingers on the trigger or not it'll go straight to number 92 whatever that is and for me number 92 value 92 is um is idle speed so the motors will actually start spinning straight away like straight away as soon as the ESC exits the arming sequence the motors will start spinning at a slow idle speed you can have this value at like 90 or lower or 91 and your motors will stay off however I like it spinning at um, the slower speed which is 92 in my case your number may your values may vary but um, that way when it's already running at a slow speed when you uh, hold down the secondary trigger or the rev up switch uh, the motors will rev up faster there's less of a delay uh, between until it reaches its max speed talking about its max speed the max speed is here number 97 um, I currently have it set to 100 on the actual thing uh, but the maximum speed is here basically that and you know the, fa the faster you want your dart to fly uh, the faster you want the flywheels to spin you just increase this number and I think the max number is around 115 to about 120 somewhere around there again your values may vary depending on, on your depending on your ESC and motors uh, but mine is around 115 I believe I only ever put it up to 100 because that spins plenty fast um, although tomorrow the day after probably the day after tomorrow I upload a video of uh, test firing like proper test firing um, where I just crank it up to like 1, 120, 115 whatever the max speed is I'm going to see if my flywheels explode or not because they're just 3D printed flywheels so um, and I'm going to see how fast the uh, dart flies and hopefully I can somehow measure the uh, dart velocity etc anyways without getting too distracted um, that is how you increase the max speed scrolling down further we have the solenoids this is the solenoid section this controls how fast the solenoid turns on and off now before you do any of this stuff um, your solenoid won't work unless you upgrade the spring uh, upgrade your spring to a 0 0.9 a 0 0.9 millimeter diameter spring um, that's the wire diameter thickness the outside diameter is I believe 14 millimeters and the length of the spring is 40 millimeters that basically gives it a stiffer spring which is kind of ironic because in nerf blasters you usually upgrade to a stiffer spring in this case with a solenoid you upgrade you upgrade the uh, solenoid spring um, which goes right right here um, I'm not showing it on the drawing here but right right on the CAD model here but right here there's a spring and you've got to make it stiffer otherwise the spring is too weak to pull it back again and it gets like caught on it gets caught it gets dragged on the uh, darts in the magazine so make sure you do that first um, and then here um, putting a stiffer spring on actually increases the fire rate because the Arduino doesn't have to wait or the solenoid doesn't have to wait so long for the spring to expand again because with a stiffer spring it expands faster basically uh, this number here 90 actually before I get to this 
Um, actually, no, I'll explain it now. This Namanati here is the uh, on duration. So you want the solen you want the solenoid to fire uh, and extend fully. Now you want a 35 millimeter solenoid, otherwise you won't have enough reach to push a full dart, full si a full length dart um, far enough. 35 millimeter. You want it to travel 35 millimeters or around there, and 90 milliseconds. Um, I think for me it was actually shorter. I think it's more like 60 milliseconds. But you got to play around with it, right? And look at it carefully. And you can usually hear, depending on your solenoid, you get uh, sometimes they make like a clacking sound, like a clicking sound every time it reaches its maximum stroke length. Um, and when you and if you don't hear that clicking sound, then this number here is probably too low, it's not reaching its full length, so maybe it's too low, like 40 or 50. I think for me it was around 50 or 60, maybe 55. Just you got to play with the numbers and uh, basically decrease this for the highest, for the fastest fire rate, decrease this number as, as much as possible. Um, you'll probably get it to around 50 milliseconds. Um, so decrease it as much as possible, but not too much, so that the solenoid still is able to have enough time to fully extend to 35 millimeters. Now this 100 number down here is the delay. Now when you upgrade your spring, this delay will also go down. This delay is basically the off time. That 60 up there is the on time. So it, after it turns on, it, the solenoid has to turn off or de-energize so that it can return to its original position. So for that to return to its original position, that's what the spring does in the solen on the on the rear of the solenoid, and the a, a stiffer stiffer spring means it doesn't have to um, wait as long uh, to return to its original position. So this 80 number here, um, it, it's going to be around 80 or maybe 70, about 70, 80 or something like that uh, for a 0 0.9 millimeter thick spring, an uh, upgraded spring. Um, and again. Reduce this number as much as possible um, to increase your fire rate, so that but still make sure that it has enough time to return for the spring to fully expand and the solenoid to return to its original position. Um, so decrease these two numbers to increase fire rate. Now the thing I was going to mention before is this line right here. This line right here um, helps prevent jams. So the way that works is you have two triggers you got you got um, so beneath here not shown on the CAD drawing but beneath here there's like a secondary switch and that secondary switch is um, micro switch you press and hold it f to rev the um, to rev the flywheels and then only then uh, are you able to pull this trigger and you can physically pull this trigger whenever you want but only then does the code allow this trigger to um, fire the solenoid so you cannot see so if you do not if you're not holding the rev switch and you try to pull the solenoid trigger it won't do anything because if this solenoid fires this solenoid fires when the flywheels are on a slow speed or not spinning um, it's just going to go munch up the dart into some static into some non-spinning flywheels so um, and that's going to cause jams and stuff you're just going to mash up your dart um, so to prevent that um, it is required to hold the rev trigger then pull the um, primary solenoid trigger and that'll allow you to fire and this line of code here is what does that um, so it's really this and and in the middle here so if button state F equals low now low means pressed because I got pull up I got pull up resistors instead of pull down so I got pull up resistors. so it's sort of backwards here but it, this is just how it works okay so low means on so if button state uh, F so F means flywheel um, rev rev trigger is on and as well and the solenoid trigger is also on or pressed then it will do the rest of this stuff now if now if that if that if that is not met if that if statement is not met if any of the triggers are not pressed triggers not pressed or whatever uh, then um, it will return the solenoid to an off state down here 
and in this case the sort the low means off for the solenoid um, so that is how so higher means on for the solenoid low means off low means off for the solenoid but up here low means on and low means on for the for the trigger push button micro switches so hopefully that um explains the coding a bit there this is a very basic code if you want to take this further you can um i'm not an expert in coding so if you want to take this further you can totally you know download this modify edit it whatever and you can add things like a, a more lines of code that add like select fire like fully automatic as it is right now or you can just select between that and and like um uh, burst fire, single fire, and you have like a switch on the side of the, your blaster and it can switch between them. Um, and then also you can have like a potentiometer or like a knob on the side of your blaster and you can turn that knob and you can control um, the speed of the flywheels with a knob just on the fly. Again, you have to figure that out yourself. I don't know how to do that, but um, that's something that I may do for a future project. Uh, but for this is just like the bare bones, get it working, get it shooting stuff, and it will just work with this code. Um, so long as you wire it up the same way as shown here. And you can uh, look at this, um, you can pause the video, look at this uh, schematic, or you can go to that build log and you can download the schematic yourself down here. Just download that. I already downloaded it many times. Now I've got lots of them all over my desktop. So hopefully uh, this video has helped you um, just like this video, uh, etc. If it's helped you and um, that helps the video ranking apparently, um, according to my research. Um, next video will be test firing and stuff. That could be in a couple of days time. All right guys, and one last thing before I go. This is a super exciting announcement that I'll be releasing these files on Thingiverse and it's totally free. Yay. So you can print it out yourself. So uh, I think there's around 50, 50 parts to print, I believe, about 50, maybe 40, 50, something like that. Uh, but I need to prepare the files a little bit, so I need to like modify them slightly. Um, that way it just makes it easier for you guys to print it. So just give me until next week, um, and next weekend I'll get it all ready about a week from the time of this video being uploaded, about a week from now. I'll give you all the files on Thingiverse, and um, so follow my build logs in the description below. There's links to my build logs. There you'll find on Nerf Haven and the Reddit build logs at least um, detailed instructions on how I printed it, etc., etc. So you can print it out yourself. And um, so yeah, subscribe to keep up to date with that. And leave a comment below, suggestions, questions, etc. I've got some time to answer all your questions, etc. Smash that like button because that helps the ranking of the video. So. More people can see this video and download free files and stuff. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next video.